So I think that shades and structures, how about that? Okay. Okay. So we know that there's, you know, quite a few different types. So I think maybe a, a way to tackle this is let's each um, talk about some different shade structures or shade items, and then we can comment back and forth on them and tell people about the ins and outs. But this is totally focused on shade. I mean, we're in Texas where it's hot. In Arizona, it's hot. California, it's hot. Florida, it's hot. Anywhere in the Sun Belt, if you're building a pool outdoors, you very you may very well be looking for a way to find some shade and some reprieve from the sun. And that, that's really what this episode's about. Awesome. So you got to start with your favorite? I don't really have a favorite. I mean, I think that shade is undervalued, especially when it when it's so hot out. But I like them all. I mean, I, it just depends on the job. I mean, pergolas look really cool in some places. Shed roofs are great at the end of a pool, especially if you got a, you know, a sunken the fire uh, place area or a sunken kitchen. I mean, it becomes part of the pool. And, and that's really what these pools have morphed into. They've just morphed into more than pools. They're just these entire outdoor entertaining areas. Um, shade cells can look really good. Um, retractable shades. I mean, there, there's just, there's a lot of them. I'm going to start with one. Yes. Which one? Let's start with pergolas because I think not everybody understands what pergola is because it's called a couple different things depending on where you're at. So what's your definition? So a pergola is going to be something that's not going to have a completely enclosed roof. It's going to have slats on it. So okay. it could be built out of wood. It could be built out of metal. It can be specified and built in different dimensions so you could get different percentage of sun coverage straight above or not. You can also do, I mean, essentially an Equinox is a pergola, but it just happens to be powered. So you can close and open the slats. So pergola is going to not give you 100% shade protection, but it's going to give you some shade on those hot days. It's also not going to give you any protection from the rain, but again, it gives you shade. Here in Phoenix, where it doesn't rain very much, that's not necessarily a big deal. So th there are some panels you can put on top of those mm -hmm. to create a uh, a rain barrier. Sure. So uh, there's some acrylic that can be the used. clear ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a possibility, but I wouldn't say it's a waterproof solution. Sure. And you have to put some, a little bit of slope on it. So the water drains off of that space. Uh, I've seen some recently that have been done really neat with some special uh, metal panels on top that have different patterns cut into the metal. And so it's not just your standard, you know, one by, you know, two on top of a two by six type of, you know, wood situation. So it can be something that's fairly decorative. So what you're talking about is the fabricated panels that are made with plasma cutting. Correct. Yeah. yeah they're very cool. Yeah. So then the other thing that you mentioned is that I see more and more people that are doing using uh, metal. Uh, so metal fabrication to create the structure instead of a uh, wood situation. So, and there's a lot of pros to that as well. Oh, for sure. You're not uh, restaining wood all the time. Yeah. So a couple of things are a little different with those than some other type of structures, because I was talking today about somebody and, and when I usually do a structure, if it's a Arbor type structure, there's, there's some flexibility in that structure. It can move a little bit and it's not going to, you know, it's generally uh, not got a solid roof. It doesn't have a solid roof on it. So I'll attach that to the shell of a swimming pool. Okay. But if I have a structure that has a solid roof, I don't want to attach it to the shell because I want them to move independent of each other because we have, again, this clay soil in this area. Uh, so, you know, but you have to have some type of footing or something underneath it to support, you know, those versus some different engineered structures that we'll talk about later with the mother uh, type structure. So pergolas being slatted, then we've got what, like a shed roof style structure? Sure. Uh, so you know, shed roof would be where the roof just pitches all in one direction. And one thing, uh, so people understand these things, we're going to put pictures on our Instagram and on the YouTube channel that reflect all these. So you can l use these as a resource later on to communicate to people what you're kind of looking for. But well, and on the website yes. too as well. Correct. And they could be referenced off of episodes. Correct. That's good. Uh, so a shed roof, you know, if you take a piece of paper, it's all pitched in one direction. 
So you've got a high side and a low side, and it's all just one sheet. Uh, so that, that works with the, the modern style architecture For a little sure. bit more. So the other thing that helps a lot of times, some of these cities have height limitations on structures. And so you can get a shed roof that may fall under the height restrictions where it would be difficult to do other type roofs because of the, the way the pitches and everything are. Like with the gable or hip roof? Correct. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of those. The other thing is it's, it gives a real open feel uh, if you have it facing your primary view so you can kind of see into the space. The ceiling a lot of times is, a lot of times people will use exposed beams in there or sometimes they'll do it where it's all covered with, you know, a tongue and groove cedar or uh, some other type of finish where it's all flat ceiling. So, you know, those are details that we'll get into when we, you know, talk more. Lots of options on them. Correct. And the thing with um, shed roofs is that pitch and the pitch got to be what, at least three to one, Uh, two to one. The three three ones rarely three twelve pitch I think is the the minimum you can do most of the time uh, without having some issues with uh, leaking and it, you can also come in with different depending on the roofing material that you use on it you might be able to get something lower than but that three to twelve would be like a four to one no it would be like a three to one yes yeah so you know when you do a roof like that most homeowners associations are going to make you make that roofing material to match your house absolutely so if you have a tile roof you're going to have a tile roof on the the structure or metal or composition shingles whatever matches architecturally with that 